Hello and welcome to the weekend edition of National Focus. I'm your presenter, Mervyn Matthew. Thank you for joining us. Coming up on National Focus, Eastern Caribbean governments transfer Baiko business to Sajiko. An official funeral has been planned for former Speaker of the House of Assembly, Ozzy Sims, and agriculture at the Dominica State College to receive a boost in program quality. All these stories and more when National Focus returns. Documentaries and in-depth discussions, community walkthroughs, and yes, we care. See it all on GIS Channel Seven. Channel Seven. Channel Seven. Channel Seven. Welcome back. Time now for the details of the news. The governments of the Eastern Caribbean announced this week that they have finalized an agreement allowing for the transfer of the traditional insurance business of British American Insurance Company Limited, BICO, to Sajiko Life Incorporated. Tanya Green has more in this report. In June last year, the governments grouped under the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union, the ECCU, said they would provide funding to assist in restoring value to the transferring policies as they sought to deal with the fallout caused by the financial collapse of the Trinidad-based CL Financial Group that includes the colonial life insurance company Clico and Bico. A statement posted on the websites of the governments noted that following approval from all nine insurance regulators and courts within the ECCU and the Bahamas, where BICO is incorporated, the transfer of the traditional insurance businesses to Sajiko had been finalized on March 15, 2013. As a result of the transaction, over 15,000 former BICO policyholders have had their policies recapitalized and are once again able to enjoy their original policy terms and access their insurance benefits, the statesman said. It said that Sajiko will make contact with each affected policyholder whose policy has been transferred and to confirm how to continue receiving their policy-related benefits, pay premiums, and make claims. Sajiko has made interim arrangements with BICO for BICO branches in the ECCU to provide ongoing customer support to policyholders. This means that BICO will accept premiums and claims and conduct other customer services on behalf of Sajiko. In the case of policyholders who had allowed their policies to lapse for a variety of reasons, the statement said that the governments and Sajiko will now focus on identifying whether a solution can be implemented for those traditional life insurance policyholders whose policies lapsed between the commencement of BICO's judicial management and the announcement of the sale of the traditional life insurance business to Sajiko. The business being sold is made up of group pensions and traditional life policies, including universal life, term life and endowment, issued by BICO in Anguilla, Antigua, Dominica, Grenada, Montserrat, St. Lucia, St. Kitts and Nevis, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Approximately 17,500 policyholders are expected to benefit from the sale restoring the policy values for nearly two in every three BICO policyholders, according to a statement on BICO's website. Sajiko, the Barbadian parent of Sajiko Life Jamaica, is one of the largest insurers operating in the Caribbean region. For National Focus, I am Tanya Green reporting. Thank you, Tanya, for that report. In more news, the government of Dominica has decided that Mr. Frederick Osborne George Sims will be afforded an official funeral on Monday, March 25, 2014 at the St. Alphonsus Roman Catholic Church at 3.30 p.m. As a sign of respect, the Dominican flag shall be flown at half-staff on all public buildings in the state on that day. Frederick Sims, a retired public officer and former Speaker of the House of Assembly, held several positions in the public service, including Director of Audit, Permanent Secretary in various ministries, and the Chief Establishment Officer. He also served as Secretary to the Public Service Commission and was Chairperson of the Job Classification Appeals Committee. Mr. Sims was also a very active member of the Civil Service Association, as it was then called. Mr. Ozzy Sims passed away on Tuesday, March 12, at the age of 75. 
The National Youth Choir of Antigua and Barbuda will for the first time ever perform in Dominica this weekend. The event dubbed Seasons of Love will be held at the Arrow House of Culture on Saturday. This is all in an effort again to promote arts and culture in the region. It's a very important effort again in regional integration because I mean we are so close in the region. We share a similar culture and we are um, our, part of our mandate as cultural vision is to help to promote not just the Dominican culture but as well the culture cultural experiences from the other islands and especially the CARICOM countries as well. The visiting choir consists of 47 young adults led by Renny Smith and Lola Peterson and have been in existence for the past seven years. Gilbert Loda is the Deputy Director of Culture in Antigua. He says the choir's visit to Dominica fulfills part of the mandate of the vision of culture in Antigua. Our main mandate is to promote exhibit and to develop person in the performing arts and culture in general. And so being part of the National Youth Choir is like our own job is to, to develop young persons, young minded persons. And when we develop them we find an avenue to exhibit them on stage. And we have been performing locally to many of the local functions in Antigua. The group have traveled to Suriname. They have traveled to Trinidad and now in Dominica. And we, we came to Dominica as an ambassadorial trip, cultural trip, where we can exchange the Antigua culture into the Dominica culture. Director of the Sixth Form Cicero Singers, Paul Christian, is looking forward to the performances of the Antigua Choir this weekend. Like a lot of the youth choirs of the Caribbean, they present a very varied repertoire. So on Saturday the 23rd at the Arawak House of Culture starting at 8 o'clock, we can expect a very entertaining package of secular concert music, sacred concert music, music from Broadway and, play and pop music, also Caribbean pop and folk music. So it's a very varied repertoire. And uh, like the, the choirs now, they, they do a lot of choreography, so that makes it, it gives it a different, uh, a, that extra dimension of movement, nice visual impact. Um, so I'm really hoping that people can come out and see this because it is going to be a very entertaining package at the Arab House of Culture. The concert begins at 8.30 on Saturday evening at the Arab House of Culture and the tickets cost $25. Friday, March 22nd this year was declared World Water Day under the theme Water Cooperation. Dominica's Minister for Water Resource Management, Honorable Reginald Austri, delivered an address marking the occasion. Minister Austri explained the origin of the theme. On February 11, 2013, the United Nations General Assembly, in its resolution 65154, decided to proclaim 2013 the International Year of Water Cooperation. The objective of the year is to raise the awareness of both the potential for increased cooperation and the challenges facing water management in the context of greater demand for water access, allocation and services. During the International Year of Water Cooperation, the history of successful water cooperation initiatives will be highlighted with an aim to make people aware of that idea. The International Year for Water Cooperation focuses on one of the most important aspects of water management, water diplomacy and cooperation. As the quality and quantity of water has degraded in large parts of the world, so too has the competition among societies and communities leading to access clean water increased. Referring to Dominica's own efforts at water cooperation, a minister also referred to the recent two-day water loss control seminar, which was held in collaboration with the government of the Republic of Colombia. The minister also spoke of jointly funded water investments around the island. Of major interest to the water minister is the conservation of Do Dominica's water to ensure the sustainability of that important resource. With all this, it is important to ensure that we position Dominica to continue to play a part in preserving the resource in the face of major challenges such as climate change and pollution. We must be vigilant in our efforts to build awareness about the real threats to our water resources here on Inichia Island. 
and take precise action to ensure that future generations will have access to an abundance of water in the same way that we do today. The first World Water Day was declared by the United Nations in December 1992. The Office of Disaster Management is reporting encouraging results based on a tsunami alert simulation exercise which took place in Portsmouth on Wednesday. GIS News joined disaster officials at the Office of Disaster Management during their initial debriefing on Friday morning. And although discussions are ongoing, disaster coordinator at the ODM, Don Corriott, is satisfied with the conclusions thus far. Generally, I think it was a very well-planned exercise. I think the execution went well. Um, obviously, there are going to be gaps, and, and we are already getting some recommendations coming out from the participants from, from, from the, from the um, exercise. So we're going to be meeting with them again next week, Wednesday, and at that meeting, that's what we're preparing for right now, and at that meeting, we're hoping to get some of the recommendations, some of the gaps that they have identified, and um, that will address the issues going forward. According to Corriere, the Carib Wave Lantex 13 tsunami scenario was used. It involved over 44 countries um, around, the, uh, around the world, including the Caribbean. And uh, the exercise was designed to test a number of, of, of factors in our, in our protocol, in our disaster management protocol. Each country had the opportunity to choose um, what protocol they wanted to, to, to um, exercise. In our case, we chose to exercise our communication protocol and to a limited extent our evacuation protocol. In that, in that regard, we chose Postmount, uh, the community of Postmount, as a pilot project for the exercise. Mandela Christian, program officer at the ODM, described that scenario. An earthquake occurred. 8.5 off the coast of Aruba, and in turn that generated a tsunami that would be affecting the entire Caribbean. The wave was expected to hit us at, uh, well, it occurred, sorry, at 9 o'clock, around 9 o'clock in the morning. The wave was expected to hit us at about 10 o'clock, 10 past 10. It was a one meter wave, but we could have changed it a bit based on, to, well, to, to suit our, our, our needs here in Dominica. Basically, what happened, the wave would affect Portsmouth, well, the entire island, but we chose Portsmouth, we chose to focus on Portsmouth, and we were basically testing to see, testing the evacuation protocols in, in Portsmouth and our evacuation routes, where we would send the people to, and how the whole scenario unfolds from the time the message is received by the officials, how it get it's filtered down to the, popu to the population, to the ordinary people on the streets, and how they in turn interpret this information and get to the safety points. The town of Portsmouth was chosen as a pilot project since it is the coastal and low-lying like many communities around the island. According to disaster officials, tsunami alerts are as hazardous to Portsmouth as to the rest of the island, indicating the need for the establishment of appropriate warning and communication systems. Assisting with the entire exercise is Australian volunteer Susan Crochetti, who briefly described these conclusions. What it said about the town of Portsmouth was that they were open to the challenge and it was great to see so many people um, committed and focused on the exercise. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done and that was partly why we chose them in the first place was it was a really good way of focusing atten attention and bringing people together to really think about each step of an emergency and what what needs to be teased out from each one of those steps and how it impacts um, each person within a disaster committee and all of the support agencies and uh, how well they are um, at delivering um, on the day and what they need to do, what systems and processes, what emergency equipment um, that we can as a group um, collectively put together to, to ready Portsmouth. So um, it was really, really good to see that when people got the phone calls, they took it very seriously. We really appreciated the help of, of a whole range of school children who came and helped us time the evacuation routes so that we could firm up those routes and, and actually put signs out in the community so people know where they have to walk. Uh, it was great to see um, a lot of the, um, the town council, the mayor, 
uh, police were all heavily involved in the day. I think it was very successful in raising awareness of the role of the Disaster Committee and how important having a really good plan in place is. The simulation exercise conducted in Portsmouth succeeded in pointing out the gaps and strong points in the communication system in the event of an actual tsunami warning. Crochetti explained further. Some of the strengths was that, that people um, have now recognised how important putting a good plan in place is. Uh, I definitely think that that was one of the strengths. Um, some of the, the important roles that the police um, have to take in um, providing that, that civil um, society um, control and um, the emergency evacuation procedures. Uh, some of the weaknesses I think was that our, our communication um, ability uh, the, we don't have a strong radio network here in, in Dominica, so we heavily rely on mobile phones. So this is really um, brought to attention that we need to have alternative and backup methods of communication. But I think, I think the, the feeling was that given that we would have had about an hour and a half to evacuate everyone, that we can go from this exercise on Wednesday and really build a good plan that in reality, had this have happened with the plan in place, we could have evacuated people to safe locations. Steve Joseph, Acting Program Officer at the ODM, says the initiative is part of a much wider effort in disaster management, an effort in integrating community and sectoral disaster management plans. Importantly, this is part of a bigger process of, of preparing Dominica to be tsunami ready. And um, you know we, we concentrate heavily on being prepared for hurricanes. But tsunami is an important matter for Dominica. And let, let us make it clear, Dominica has been in the past affected by tsunamis. So we are in a process of, of focusing on Portsmouth, as was said. And we will be going back there this coming week on Wednesday. First of all, to, to hear from them their, their own experiences uh, in, in a debrief, but to begin to put some concrete targets towards establishing, uh, further establishing the Community Disaster Committee, establishing um, a plan that we can fully simulate and to make preparations for a bigger project that we hope to undertake on the UNDP-funded um, initiative. That move will involve adequate signage and the training and school awareness campaigns. ODF officials will meet with residents of Portsmouth next week to continue these discussions. In more news, the Dominica State College has established a partnership with two Canadian universities, Dalhousie University Faculty of Agriculture and the University of Guelph Kenville Campus to design, develop and deliver a level three vocational qualification in agribusiness for Dominica. The DSC chose agribusiness in recognition that agriculture must be approached as a business geared towards increasing production and productivity. The partnership will provide an excellent opportunity to make the agriculture science program at DSC more practical and relevant to Dominica's needs. The new program will feature modules in entrepreneurship to stimulate the search for opportunities for graduates of the program to identify and develop their own agribusiness. A wide variety of practicing agriculturists in Dominica, particularly those in the small business sector, will contribute to the development of the critical standards for the new qualification. The CARICOM Education for Employment Project, with financing from the Canadian International Development Agency, is financing the curriculum development aspect of this new DSC, Vocational Qualification in Agribusiness. The program supports economic development of the Caribbean region through strengthening of its technical and vocational education and the training system. It supports education and training institutions and the national training agencies to be more responsive, applied, demand-driven, with a goal to provide learners with the critical knowledge, skills and attitudes for workforce development and economic competitiveness. Preliminary work on this project began in December 2012, but the official signing will take place in December, in April 2013. 
Assistant Registrar for the Public Information and Customs Services of CXC Cleveland, Sam, is optimistic about the impact of this week's art exhibition at the Old Mill Cultural Center. Sam spoke with GIS News on the last day of the event on Friday. The exhibition showcased the visual art talents of Caribbean students. The CXC Visual Arts Syllabus has quite a number of options, about eight of them. And what we try to do is to put on display la creme de la creme from each of those options. So you have, um, for example, fiber and decorative arts. You have painting and mixed media, which is a very exciting option in the syllabus because it gives the student quite a bit of liberties in terms of them expressing their creativity. We have textile design and manipulation. And if you look at that downstairs of the exhibition hall, that is filled with um, those. And of course you have drawing, which is like the most popular section um, of the syllabus where almost of the students do. We also have graphic design and communication. And we try to encourage quite a lot of people to do this option because it is one of those options where if you can do it very well, you could start making money from when you're in high school by designing logos, posters, you name it, labels for products and so on. The exhibition also showcased sculpture and ceramics and leather craft. GIS News also spoke with two students about their impressions of that exhibition. I'm very impressed at some of the work that I've seen here today. And I will personally like to, when I reach in, in fifth form with Mrs. Toro, that I might be able to do some of the art that I have seen here today. And some of them, although they look a bit hard, but I maybe one day I might learn how to do it and be better, be good enough to be in one of these exhibitions and maybe win one of the awards, like the two-dimensional best award or the three-dimensional award. And I really, really, I really was impressed today. After today, I am very enthusiastic about art because I've seen the various works that students can do and. As the man, the gentleman told me, Obama said, yes, we can, and if one person can do it, that means I can do it too. The University of the Western is open campus, Dominica, and the Ministry of Education and Human Resource Development, in collaboration with the UE Cave Hill Campus, the University of Cambridge Commonwealth Education Trust, and the Caribbean Examination Council, will host an evening of poetry on Monday, March 25, 2013, from 6 p.m. at the UE Open Campus Dominica Auditorium. The evening event is free of charge to the general public and will feature poetry and the music by Dominican and other Caribbean poets, including Professor Mark Macwatt and Dr. Philip Nanton. The evening of poetry forms part of the Caribbean Poetry Project, which is a joint research and teaching program that encourages an engagement with Caribbean poetry to improve the teaching and learning of poetry in both British and Caribbean schools. UE Cavill will also hold a two-day teaching Caribbean poetry workshop for secondary and tertiary level teachers in Dominica on March 25th and the 26th. And finally, this news time, two first form students of the Casper Secondary School are the first recipients of the Dr. Augustus Valmont Scholarship. Ajayan Edwards and Joella Challenger has received a five-year scholarship to attend the Castlebrook Secondary School. The scholarships were awarded to these students based on merit and need. Every year, two additional students will receive the, the Dr. Augustus Valmont Scholarship. Dr. Augustus Valmont, who is a kidney specialist, is from Castlebrook and currently resides and works in the United States. Dr. Valmont views the provision of these scholarships as a way of giving back to his community. He said he would also like to help in whatever way he can, from a health standpoint, to improve the lives and conditions of patients suffering from kidney diseases in Dominica. And that's the English segment of the news. Mark for St. Louis is next with the Creole Highlights. And that's the English segment of the news. Mark for St. Louis is next with the Creole Highlights. Hello, tout moon. Bienvenue à ce nouvel Creole, non moins c'est McPherson St. Louis. Premièrement, l'Office des Arts Dominique conduit un exercice simulation en ville Gontens pour mettre mes en place en tous les cas en tsunami qui affecte la ville. La simulation s'en là pour en place la semaine passée. Quand même, si l'on officier l'Office des Arts Dominique Steve Joseph, mon ville là tape information, ça y aussi bosé fait si en tous les cas. Nous ni autant communauté nous qui pour la main avec ces communautés ça là yo ba comme ça mardi qui passé mardi 20 mars 
nous 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 participer dans l'exercice tsunami nous tester les euh, messages là où il à national disaster coordinator avec ça nous a créé focal point à nous tester comment message ça là que que passer hors à officier national pour community avec nous choisi gontrans Uh, pour participer à l'exercice ça là et uh, nous tester comment uh, la police à communauté là et la mer et tout le monde qui a organisé action ça là qui a été décision à uh, yo 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 cap point pour pour essayer mon gontrans taper message là si chimé ou là yo yo business à l'école et ve, nous tester Combien de temps il y a point pour le monde marcher Eh bien, allez, si vous avez couru, vous avez couru. Si vous avez marché, vous avez marché. Pour aller en cinq places, nous sélectionner. Ça nous a créé safety points. Côté l'hôpital, à, à, à Cotton Hill, pour, pour l'Argon, à, à, à différentes places, Guantanamo, à différentes sections. L'Argon, saint Guantan Central, Glanvillia. Picard avec TB. Eh bien, nous nous bien contents qui a exercise là et aller bien. Nous tenir officier ODM à Gontans qui travaille avec communauté là. Nous contents nos nouveaux volontaires, Miss Koshati, avec Miss Christian qui travaille bien ouais avec ces monde à Gontans pour pour coordonner activité ça là. Uh, D'autres nouvelles, si X a continué pour monter les affaires visuelles à l'école. Parole celle-là, sorti de l'officier si X Cleveland Sam, pendant qu'il était parlé en cérémonie, où la si X lancé exhibition visuelle à Simen Salam en vie moulin. Cleveland fait parole que visual arts bien vivant, preuve qu'il est capable d'être assez syllabus de l'école. Il aussi fait parole qui y a mené subjet digital media pour étudier l'école secondaire en pays Kawaib. Cleveland dit pas assez attention qu'à mettre assez visual arts, qu'on s'a écouté assez media pour promouvoir le travail artiste. Ministère de l'Éducation, Honorable Peter Saint-Jean, déjà fait parole qui a fait visual arts qui est un subjet en toute l'école en pays là. Exhibition visual arts venue au bout. En la nouvelle, le ministère de management de l'eau, Honorable Virgin Law Street, qui a créé assez population là pour la conservation de l'eau à Pélin. Selon Honorable Austrian, il a coûté de voir ce qu'on a l'argent pour pomper de l'eau à cette occasion. Il a aussi fait par Wall qui ressource de l'eau à Pélin à Cadesson. Honorable Austrian fait par Wall Salam, pendant qu'on a dit de voir ce qu'on a fait un workshop de jour. Plus par on average, nous avons payé donc like 1.6 million de dollars en électricité bills tous les années parce que nous nous système glo qui a pompé, nous nous pour pomper glo en ces villages là qui est montagne là et ça a coûté nous l'argent et nous avons perdu un lot glo en système là quand ça a fait nous avons payé électricité pour glo nous pas qu'à trouver quand ça c'est maintenant ça là qui a dû se un lot problème nous est il y en a pour nous conserver glo nous et protéger des Comment pour nous empêcher de traiter un um, glo qui a coulé hot système là et pour nous voir comment nous ça baisser puis qui domlek qui d'avoir ce qu'on paye pour domlek pour ça mener glo en ces uh, différents différents pays là. Conservation là qui est bien au point hein. Et ben il a venu en dans on les les nous a expérimenté ça nous a créé un drought et pour quatre semaines mon déjà commencé à pleurer. Imaginez, drought ça l'était pour continuer pour 6, 7, 8 mois pour une année. Ça nous a fait un domaine sans glo. Et bien, nous avons commencé à apprécier la valeur de glo pour le pays là et la valeur de water to the people of Dominica. Et puis finalement, le gouvernement Dominique a décidé pour bas ancien speaker du Parlement, Frederick Osborne Sims, un lettement officiel le 25 mars. L'éternement salaire qui prend place en l'église catholique Saint Alphonse qui a commencé à 3h30. Tout droit pour le pays là qui baisse à toute maison publique pays là à ce jour-là. Sims travaille en plusieurs positions service public, association CSE et puis il aussi est engagé en affaires sport. Sims travaille en bas chef gouvernement con Ioli Blanc, 
Frank Baron, Patrick John, Dame Eugenia Charles, OG Seraphine, A.P. Edison James, Sims Moore, and L'Hopital Princess Margaret, and Wozo, are still a douze mass l'année à l'âge 75 l'année. Sims qui était derrière Madame Nestella, quatre enfants, cinq fois, trois CC, Nive, et puis Nies, et puis autant d'autres amis. Mais c'est mesdames, ça c'est tout pour nos nouvelles créoles pour à présent. Non, moi c'est Marc Fossil saint Louis. Ni un bon week-end. Au revoir. Coming up next, your tip of the day. Mais c'est mesdames, ça c'est tout pour nos nouvelles créoles pour à présent. Non, moi c'est Marc Fossil saint Louis. Au revoir. Thank you, Mark Fusson. Coming up next, your tip of the day. If you want to keep yourself in shape and reduce your risk of heart disease, walk at least one mile a day. Not only will your heart be stronger, but your bones will be strengthened by your daily strolls as well. And that's all for National Focus today. We welcome your suggestions and comments. Feel free to drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or you could visit our website at news.gov.dm. On behalf of the entire news production team, I'm Mervyn Matthew. Have a great weekend. Thank you.